APs. Uh, they can report on rogue APs. And they also triangulate the location of devices. So they can triangulate the location of rogue APs. Uh, they can triangulate the location of assets. So you can use RFID tagging as well. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the maps. And what I'll do is I'm going to build a hierarchy, or at least show you guys how to build a hierarchy. Uh, the root map name, uh, I'll just call this Arrowhive. And uh, <clears throat> the operational environment will be an office. Uh, I'm not going to put a background image in just yet. And uh, I'm going to set the map to one, one by one feet. Uh, the Hive AP installation height is nine feet. This is more of a placeholder for me. <clears throat> and uh, I'm actually going to create uh, the floor plans in a, uh, a different level as we move down. So think of this as the main entity, the, high, uh, the highest hierarchy. And what I can do is create, right-click on that and uh, uh, select New and create items that fall underneath it. So in here, what I'll do is uh, I'll just call this Site 1. And I'll do the same thing here uh, where I'll just uh, put in sort of a placeholder one by one. AP installation height at 9. I'm not going to put a background image just yet. Uh, I'll select the environment to be office. I'll go ahead and create that. So this is sort of like, hey, this is Arrowhive. This is one of our sites. Within this site, we have a building. Uh, so I'll call this building 1 and uh, select building as the map icon. And uh, the environment is office space. And I'm not going to put a map in here just yet. And uh, we'll set this to feet. And I'll just put one by one in here. Uh, it requires some numbers to be put in there. Uh, and uh, I'm doing this to kind of show you how I can build a hierarchy. I can step down by site if I wanted to. I could create multiple sites underneath here. Then I could create buildings in each site. And then I could even go far so far as to put floor in for each building, like if a building has two floors or three floors. Uh, and you would just right click there and say new. Uh, for this demo, though, I'll just create the map in building one. So what I'll do is right click on it, uh, say edit. And what I can do is in the background image selection is choose a background image. Uh, we have preloaded ones. I'm going to go ahead and use one of those called Map Floor Plan. Uh, you can also, of course, upload your own maps. And you can do that on the demo tool as well. So uh, if you've already created your demo account, that's great. You can use one of your own maps for this. Uh, or if you haven't, you can actually go there and use this planner tool to figure out how many access points you need. So we'll go ahead and hit Update there. And uh, we'll click on it. This is building one, and we actually have uh, a floor plan for a building. Now, real quick, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can upload your own image files. So if you click on Operation, uh, the second choice from the bottom is Add Delete Image. You would select that. And down here on the left is a, uh, a button called Upload. Just click on that, and it allows you to uh, surf your directory structure, and you can go and find a map. Uh, we've got one here. Let's go ahead and load that up. Once it's in the system, then it becomes one of the items uh, that's choosable in a drop-down menu. All right, since we're done there. Uh, but for the purpose of this demo, I just want to use this map. It's a, it's a much more simple map uh, to get the point across. Uh, so now that I have this map in, what I'm going to do is go in and draw some walls. Uh, I'm going to select concrete for the outside walls. And uh, I'm going to select this tool here, which allows me to uh, place a wall and then keep going when I hit the corners. So I'm going to press once. That allows me to drag it across. And there we go. It allows me to drag it again as soon as I press the, button, uh, the mouse button again. And I can go around uh, the perimeter outside wall of the building like so. And then I can double click it, and that'll end it. If I uh, have a residual piece like that, I can just uh, remove it by doing that. Now that I have my outside walls completed, I can go in and select drywall for the inside walls. Um, 
this time I'm going to uh, select this tool here, uh, which doesn't allow me to keep going at the corners, which I don't want to do because I'm just going to draw straight down. I'm going to stop and then reset. So that's one drywall. And then I'll uh, do these horizontal walls here. It's a fairly simple tool. It's pretty powerful. Uh, it allows you to get an idea of uh, where you need to place your access points and, of course, more importantly, how many you need. Uh, so now that I've drawn my walls, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, select APs. And uh, I'm going to put in here the Hive AP 120. And uh, uh, the auto uh, channel is set to auto, power is set to 15. And uh, I can, of course, change that later on if I want to. One thing I forgot to do is actually scale the map. So uh, you can do that by pressing on the scaling tool. And uh, what, we, what we get is a couple of crosshairs, the red crosshairs here. And we can actually pick a known distance on the map and uh, span that distance. And we can actually scale the entire map that way. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, most doorways are usually about 36 inches. So I'm going to span the doorway with the tool. Oop, i got to change this to go up and down instead of left and right. And there we go. We span the doorway. And I'm going to say that's three feet. Go ahead and hit update. And that'll scale the entire map that way. All right. And then now we're uh, ready to place our access point. And we'll go ahead and uh, place the access point. And there you see how the walls actually affect uh, the radio signal. And, uh, and you can you know, load your own maps and basically do the same thing and determine where you need uh, access points set. Uh, let's go ahead and put one right here. That'll cover these offices here. And we can add another one here. Uh, to cover this this area here. All right, so that is the uh, the placement of our access points uh, in the uh, planner tool. And you can also, once you have the real access points, associate a real access point to the map uh, and be able to triangulate uh, the location of different items, different clients, and uh, rogue APs, and so forth. Uh, a couple of other things I want to show you is uh, monitoring. I'll just step through some of the items real quick, and then we'll take a look at the help menu. Uh, so there's quite a bit of monitoring that you can do uh, on Hive Manager. We can monitor uh, by access point, by clients, SSIDs. Uh, there's a lot of different information you can see, like uh, you know CPU utilization, radio utilization, uh, the number of clients, uh, things like this. Uh, for all of the access points as well as the SSIDs. Um, you can create customized reports, and any one of these reports can be sent out uh, to you uh, on a timely basis, either you know, every 24 hours or every week, based on uh, uh, configuration of an SMTP gateway uh, that Hive Manager can use to be able to send, the, send that information out. All right, so Hive Manager is a very powerful tool. It's a centralized management system, not to be confused with a controller, uh, for the management of wireless access points. And in the uh, Arrowhive system, the uh, access point themselves have the ability to do the control. It's basically called cooperative control. We don't have a controller. We gave protocols to the access points so they can talk to each other and uh, make those kind of decisions, do the dynamic RF control, the roaming, all of that type of information is handled by the access points without a controller. Hive Manager is merely a network management and monitoring system. Uh, so the last thing that I want to show you is the help menu. Up in the upper right-hand corner is help. Uh, a couple of things in here that are really important. Uh, there are videos and guides where you can actually uh, Go through computer-based computer training, uh, clicking here. They're very good, and they're actually very interactive where you get uh, forms, uh, the actual config items, and you can't move on to the next step until you actually put the information in that it's asking for. 
You can also download our deployment guides, the quick start guides, the command line interface, uh, all from the help menu. And you can uh, you get all of this with the, uh, the demo account as well. The other thing in the help menu that I'd like to show is the actual uh, Hive Manager help itself. So let's go ahead and click on that. It'll bring up the help menu. It's context driven, so no matter where you're at in the uh, in Hive Manager, that's the page that's actually going to show up in, in the help menu. So you can see that we're on new and managed Hive APs, and that's the section that came up here. Now there are two search functions in, Hive, uh, in the Hive Manager help. There's this search function here. This is basically kind of a find function, which will find uh, items uh, on the page that you're in. The actual database search is down here in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, so let's, uh, we'll put in a, a term here like uh, uh, dynamic airtime scheduling. And it'll bring up all the instances of dynamic airtime scheduling. It ranks it. Uh, so let's just go into the first one. And uh, you can see that uh, on the right side, uh, we're actually highlighting all the words that I've, uh, that I've done a search on. And of course, it'll highlight dynamic airtime scheduling. Uh, and we'll see it right there, dynamic airtime scheduling, uh, which is another feature that our access points have. All right, so that's Hive Manager help. And that is one of the best help systems that I've ever used. And in fact, Hive Manager itself is the best uh, network management system that I've ever worked on. I've been in the business for 18 years, been selling uh, networking equipment for 12 of those years. Hive Manager, hands down, is the, the best uh, network management system that I've ever seen. I mean, you saw it, created two SSIDs and a wireless LAN policy, pushed that out to our access points. Uh, we also had the opportunity to look at the topology tool and uh, draw some walls, place some APs, and uh, as you can see, it was very, very simple to use. So that concludes our demo of Hive Manager. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can use the uh, Ask a Question button below.